we're on folks so excited to see you all um what is up what is down um it's a wild time right now what's down number one is twitter twitter's down i don't know where to put all of my opinions uh where do they go right now or or maybe i should say i can now um, say all my most cancelable thoughts and no one's out there to cancel me um wrestling not a great show stop watching it there it is but what are you gonna do about it you can't tweet about me and cancel me it's just out there now um, what else is down? Uh, teacher morale seems like it's flagging a little bit um, with more and more schools moving to a hybrid model where um, you are teaching a Zoom crowd and an in-class crowd. And that just sounds impossible, impossible. And uh, so, so morale seems low. Uh, what is up right now are students and their capacity for brilliance. What's up or what has never changed is math and um, its beauty and its interest. And we are here to celebrate that and celebrate you folks right now. So um, I have brought on the call with me to do just that. Uh, one of my favorite colleagues uh, by the name of Faith Moynihan, I'm gonna bring her on right here, right now and let her introduce herself and let you know, uh, let you know where she's been, uh, what she's up to at Desmos. Uh, over to you, Faith, tell me who you are. All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Faith. I hail from somewhere outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, somewhere in between New York and Philly. Um, I was a high school math teacher. Um, high school was was my jam. I loved high school, and ninth graders hold a very, very uh, special place in my heart with all their squirreliness. I love them. Um, and at Desmos, right now, I'm one of the uh, lesson developers. So I think lots and lots all day long about how to to craft a lesson. Um, as a teacher, I would make lessons in minutes. And now as a lesson developer at Desmos, that unit has expanded to many weeks and many months and have like a team of amazing and talented and brilliant colleagues um, that I get to bounce ideas off of all the time. So pretty excited. Not to knock those lessons uh, that were knocked out in the minutes uh, before <laughs> fifth period during lunch, lunch, you know, making modifications after fourth period didn't go great. Uh, there's just a certain kind of appeal to those that I think us lesson developers haven't quite uh, recaptured uh, now that we have like a month runway and all of that uh, and lots of people surrounding those lessons. So what's happening today with uh, uh, me and Faith here is that one, we are going to uh, release a hot new activity to you folks. First time, never before seen um, by human eyes outside of Desmos. We're going to uh, share the top teacher activities from last month. The activities that um, you folks have made, which are so new and so fresh that we haven't put them onto our website in the search feature where um, I have access to internally, like the cool stuff you folks are making. Um, I wanna share with you folks what's out there. This is the only place you can access, unfortunately for now, um, the very, very coolest, interesting things you folks are making. Um, and finally, Faith is on hand, especially for her expertise today as um, a lesson developer. And she will be um, sharing with you folks how she would take one of these very popular activities and 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 bring it bringing what Desmos brings to the table to that activity. There's lots of ways to build great activities. We've got certain points of view, and uh, Faith is going to represent a little bit of that right now. So, uh, first, the very hot new activity that we've got for you folks right here. Uh, first of all, we were making over a lesson from the uh, fantastic illustrative mathematics curriculum. Um, you look at this right here. There's loads that I love about this. Um, for instance this comment that there are two of these mystery mixtures that taste the same and one is different. However, all three mixtures have different quantities of ingredients. That to me is a cool move. Um, stuff that we wanted to bring to the table here are, for instance, our knack with visual mathematics, bringing some cool visuals uh, that, are, that are easier for students who are, for instance, just learning um, the English language, for instance, um, but who know a lot of mathematics that they can access, um, and a few other things as well. Uh, we, so we created this visual right here, uh, the, the visual of a paint, uh, uh, some green paint getting mixed up, um, a really nice context for uh, equivalent ratios uh, for reasons that I'll make clear right here. Here's this activity. It's called paint. It is available um, on, uh, on teacher.desmos.com. Um, and you can, you can uh, grab that uh, by searching for paint, that's it. So students first just like start playing around with it. Real simple, they play around, that's all. And then what happens next, you folks who have taught middle school or have thought about middle school math at all, know what students are gonna do right here. So we ask them, so here's, here's a, first you got six white cups, five green cups. Next mixture, 12 white cups. How many green cups will that be? 
um, you know what students are going to put if they're just just really thinking about this uh, in their early ways. They might think additively and say, okay, well, add six cups to six, you get 12. So add six cups of green to five, you get 11. And so we tell them, hey, let's try this out. Let's try this out. Here we go. And we compare um, those two colors. Lots of cool stuff here. Um, I dig the original context uh, about uh, a sugary drink, right? Um, lots of great stuff there. But uh, I don't know about you folks, but I was just never all that great about lab style activities in math class. Like I, I don't do science and math crossover. Like I, I did, if it, if it required that kind of setup, I would pass on it. And right now with uh, virtual teaching for many of you, like what are you gonna do? How are you gonna set that up? And uh, you, know, you know who loves a lab about sugary drinks? Ants, ants love that. So I'm, I'm gonna pass on that. Um, and moreover, what's cool about this context here is that we're able, like students can mess around with us a little bit and try out different hypotheses and say, oh, it wasn't 11. Oh, maybe we're doubling, maybe it's a doubling thing and try out a doubling relationship instead, a multiplicative relationship instead. And they can kind of play and experiment in ways you just can't when it's like, okay, uh, teacher, can you pour me like um, a little bit less of the sugar in the glass instead, harder for that context. So this goes on and on. There's just some cool stuff going on with this. Um, like over here, we've got like a room you're painting. Um, give me, I'm gonna do a lot of red. I wanna see what happens there, just like tons of red. Like it just doesn't break. Like Desmos doesn't crack, you know? Like just type in whatever bonkers numbers you want and it will still play with it and uh, let you play with the math yourself. And then um, finally, we love um, helping students see that it's not just the teacher who is uh, the asker of mathematical questions, but that they themselves, students, uh, can ask questions as well. So we have this class gallery, you've been there, you know it, um, where students create their own shade of a color and um, and then they submit that to their, cl their classmates to make a different quantity, different volume of that color and to put their, their evolving, their developing understandings to work. Um, helping students see like, hey, I ask questions too. I ask good questions, you know? Um, so again, head to teacher.desmos.com, grab that for you and your students. Um, I just got to call out the fantastic work of our, uh, our, our chief, chief translation officer, Kayla Munoz. Uh, we have like a longer list of translations than we do a description of the activity. This is why you folks voted Shearer the Sheep into existence last week. Like we got to take a little time with that. You'll see that next week. Um, but uh, we, we got to take some time translating this, making this accessible to loads of different people, um, different cultures, different languages outside the U.S. and beyond. So that's a blast. Let's talk about it here. Uh, I want to share with you folks the top teacher activities this last month. We'll start with, um, in, in September, the most popular activity that you could find on teacher.desmos.com. There's like 150 there. Um, just the ones that we have like brought up to like put our stamp on and brought up to our particular unique code or whatever. Outside of that, there's just zillions of activities. We'll get to that in a second. So here are in September, the top uh, the, uh, numbers five through two. Numbers five through two, some titles here you might recognize, marble slides in there, transformation golf, awesome coordinate planetivity. Um, to, to share with you the number one activity from September, I gotta rescale the axes. It's just, it's just bonkers what happened with this right here. Um, the number one activity uh, is getting to know each other. And um, it happens to be the fact that um, this is an activity that was developed by loads of folks. You know, this activity getting to know each other has among other influences, um, our, uh, our amazing illustrator, um, uh, Sebastian, who uh, created like this, uh, this hot dog, which just uh, makes you wanna mess around with it and, and drag the slider on this hot dog right here. Let me load it up. Yeah, right here. Uh, that's good stuff right there. It's got that, but it also had uh, the influence of a couple of our lesson developers, Cheer Health and one, Faith Moynihan. Faith, what's your take on this? Um, why are people just uh, uh, wild for this activity in September? Well, I think I'm so excited to know that this lesson was so popular with teachers out there because that just speaks volumes to like how teachers are trying to get to know their students especially in these unprecedented times that we're in. I think we've we've wrestled with building an activity like this for a long time. And I think where we landed last year was that like this just isn't the best in a digital space. And there are other avenues that um, can take it and especially in in-person learning that like teachers have better resources out there. But in the age of distance learning, um, we, we wanted to provide a resource to, cut, to try to recreate some of uh, the magic that happens in classrooms 
uh, when when students and teachers are face to face. So so here we we wanted teachers to be able to have a way to get to know their students um, because we think that's just one of the really really important things to do in the beginning of the year. Um, I know it certainly was in my classroom. And, you know, we snuck in some, like, get to know Desmos uh, kind of mechanisms in there, but that was really a far second, third, maybe even fourth place of uh, considerations when, when creating this lesson. It was really about trying to draw out who the students are and um, getting them to know each other and the teacher trying to get to know them as well. Yeah, right on. We got like different kinds of like multiple choice, card sort, different desmos things, but I can see how that's um, you know, we, we wouldn't sacrifice the hot dogs question, you know, just for the sake of some some other Desmos introduction to our technology no way, question. No way. No way. And uh, people are people are in the chat going wild a little bit. Uh, Chrissy Newell saying it's a taco, obviously. Um, <laughs> and uh, our, our, our pal Bob Lachelle out there in uh, Pennsylvania with you, Faith, saying it's a sandwich. Um, people get a little bit ornery about this particular question. So. Anyway, that was the, um, that's been used, I think, outside of September, it's been used um, in half a million classes. I looked this up recently. Just bonkers. Grab that off a teacher. Strong work uh, to our colleague Faith and Sheer and others. So you folks, um, here are the top three from you folks right here. I got to share with you, and I'm curious if Faith, if you get like um, 30 seconds of commentary on what's going on here. We'll go from um, most popular to number one and number three here. All very popular. Um, we're keeping the y-axis a little bit ambiguous here, you know, like, how many times activities are, are run is uh, yeah, something of a trade secret here. You know, we're, we're close, we're close, but not not y-axis uh, scaling kind of close here yet. We'll get there, you and me. So um, here, here's the uh, number one was lesson 0 0.1. Uh, Faith, does this look familiar to you? Check it out right here. We got stuff like this right yeah. here. Okay, okay. This lesson, um, yeah, for sure. We took a lot of, um, of inspiration from this lesson, and I'm just really grateful to Julia for putting this out there for us all to see and, and to use. That's it's really one of the great um, the great things about the math community on Twitter is that there's just there's so much of sharing resources back and forth, um, and we're really grateful to to gain inspiration from that as well. Uh, but yeah, a lot of this looks familiar because um, we, we we took Julia's work to heart for sure. Yeah. And she has also though, like we, we saw some of this right here and we we're like, ooh, uh, we should probably fix our card sort. So there, <laughs> so you don't have to have a, a, a screen like this saying, here's how you deal with Desmos's finicky card sorts. All right. Next up is a uh, four fours from Kenneth Clarkson. That was from Julia Anker. Um, and and four fours, this one, I don't know. Like this is, uh, it makes me laugh a little bit here. You select your animal avatar. Uh, I'm a dog, obviously, and uh, and then over here, it's like, hey, how many? It's, it's the classic four fours activity, but real Desmosy. Um, what should we do here? Let me do uh, four times four minus four plus four. What's that give us? Sixteen. Do this little uh, little speech bubble here, and then what was your thought when you saw this one, Faith? When I saw this, is I. I had a lot of fun. Um, for, I was a little nervous about choosing an avatar for myself at the beginning because I was like, I don't know if any of these animals speak to me in the way that I'm feeling today. But I went through it. It was, and then I, I'm glad that I did because when I saw it pop up in my graph on the next screen, it we started to bond a little bit for sure. Yeah. Um, but what I, what I love about screen two here is that there is there's so many options, and like once I kind of understand what's happening. Um, like, I, I feel like I've got so much freedom to, to try and play and figure things out. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I love that. It brings the whole class together on this one. I can see, like, I just love the idea of the class is, like, got, you can get the, your own easy ones. And then we see as a class, like, which ones are the quote-unquote hard ones where we're struggling. I think that's so much. Mm -hmm. uh, nice job. If you want to uh, grab any of these, the links are not available at teacher.fitness.com, as I mentioned, <laughs> um, even though these are amazing. So head to the show notes here on your screen and you have those uh, those links in your show notes. Uh, last activity here we're gonna spend a little bit of time with, this is number three, um, very popular activity. And it's a little bit different here. And I would love Faith's thoughts about like, how do you see this as being different and good, uh, but different from like what we do at Desmos? Like wh what are the concerns of this right here? What is it interested in doing? How do you read it? So for this lesson overall, I think, um, as a student, what, or perhaps I'll, I'll go from the standpoint as a teacher, like 
if I was building this lesson as a teacher, I think one thing that I would be really um, excited about is like the fluency practice here. It feels like Mm -hmm. a lot, students get a lot of opportunities with scale factor, with different kinds of shapes and um, getting that feedback on on my scale factor uh, could be helpful to some students for sure. But when, so I, when I was in school, I was the kind of student who was like, all right, let me just get this done. And sometimes like I wasn't always doing my best kind of thinking. Um, and I'm, sh- I'm sure lots of people can relate to that. But as I was going through this, I felt um, sometimes I could just kind of guess and check and like throw a number in there. And I was told right away if I was right or wrong and I can kind of adjust it back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, so was, I did a little bit of gaming the system, which like, you know, any crafty student does from time to time. So I would, and, and thinking about this, if I were to like recreate or take take inspiration from from this lesson, I might find like other ways that we might be able to offer students feedback on their work. Yeah, and so I, I was excited to have Faith come on. I don't even know what she's gonna say here, but I'd love to. Let's so like again co-sign all of that. Like operational fluency, very important. Giving students uh, some definite feedback also important. This kind of feedback, we see a lot of teachers right now, a lot of teachers are just really interested in learning how to use computation layer, our programming language, um, to give students this kind of feedback. And they're, I just gotta be real, like we're not awesome at it. Like we, our system is not really geared for this kind of feedback. People are like struggling and, you know, trying to do string matching. But if someone says like two X plus three is their answer key and students says three plus two X, gets marked wrong sometimes. Like we just did not build Desmos for that, which is not a knock on the idea of it, but it's just other tools that do such a better job of that. And so Faith's going to share her screen and um, and and share with you like some ideas for like what she might do with this one. Is that cool, Faith? Yeah, that sounds good. All right, All right. give me a moment here as I share my screen. Um, sorry, folks. Right, like. Toss some ideas like in, the, in the chat while you're uh, <laughs> while Faith is on it here. Toss some ideas for what you would do uh, with this to generate different kinds of make room for different kinds of mathematical brilliance beyond um, beyond operational fluency. Think about like uh, how you might uh, if you w- were doing operational fluency, what you might do to make this activity uh, less of a uh, guess and checkable activity as well. Again, very popular, uh, great stuff. Looking to see what else is possible here. So let's see. I got um, Faith. Is that you on there? Are you set? Thanks. So. Can you see my sketch it screen? We got you. Awesome. Okay. So one of the things uh, that I noticed in uh, this activity was that um, that there there was a lot of um, checking scale factor, like looking at a card and then entering the scale factor. So it felt like we were getting that fluency with you know, entering the scale factor, but not a whole lot of um, practice with other types of, like we like to call them verbs and nouns, in uh, trying to engage with the material in lots of different ways that activates different parts of our brains. So I thought that one thing would be natural to do is just throw a sketch. Like a sketch is fun because it's like, you know, a little bit low stakes, but I would get students to just switch up that verb a little bit from entering a number to actually creating a new um, a new cop- a scaled copy um, by giving them a scale factor. So I've got uh, you know this this polygon here, and I'm asking students to sketch it by a scale factor of two. And you know students can kind of use the line tool and get their sketches in there. They can be a little bit more pre- imprecise with the pencil, but I love the a little bit more freedom to give students to to engage with scale factor here with the sketch. Another idea that I had in terms of feedback was to show students what their scale factor might be. So again, we're going from the purple shape down to the the green shape that we have there, and I'm asking students to enter in a scale factor. So students might, you know, do this a variety of ways, one of which might be, you know, guessing and checking like, like I was doing before. So I'm just going to enter in a number. And I see when I, when I enter in two, that purple uh, trapezoid pops up for me. And I can see that that it got a lot bigger than my original, but it didn't quite get me into that green. So I might even keep guessing and checking, right? Get a little bit smaller, get a little bit smaller. And that's three guesses where I'm like, all right, maybe let me attend to a little bit more detail here. 
I see that, you know, this long uh, line here on the side of the trapezoid, what's that? That's, you know, 10. And so we can enter the scale, a, a different scale factor to, to get that, um, to, to try to get me into that, that point. And I, I think my, I messed my graph up here though, Dan, right? I, I've got like half numbers in there and all of a sudden my scale factor is no longer nice. So here you go, guys, bear with me. We've got 10 here, 14, that's the, that's the, 15. That's the, that's the one and a half scale one though, right, Faith? So you, one and a half, so you, you were, you were counting up the big one, but the medium one is your, uh, is the one, is the original. Oh, uh, thanks, image. Dan. Right, I got, I got you. I'm here for you. got my feedback in there. Thank you. Thank you. you. All right. In front of a load of people. Get it's that tough, out tough. of there. <laughs> All right, so here we're going from the original that's 10. This looks much better now. Going from the original that has this length of 10 here down to four. So that's telling me that my scale factor is four over 10 or 0.4, and I can enter that a lot of different ways. And I see matches up perfectly, which is really nice. So Faith, we right. got someone here, if I can just cut in. Uh, Jimmy Winslow says that yeah. like this uh, immediate feedback is genius, especially in virtual education. So they don't have their teacher or classmate right there with them for feedback. And I just want to like say like immediate feedback, you know, like it, this is a certain kind of feedback where if you are wrong, it's not just an X. Like ideally students, uh, Dylan William says, feedback should cause thinking. And so the question I have is not just like, is it immediate, but like what thinking does it cause? And you folks felt a second ago, perhaps the impulse to guess and check. Cause that's all you could really do. Like a one, two, three. And this here, like there's some, there's the potential for guessing and checking, but it offers, uh, a, a, it gives you more information, more to think about. If I do a, a scale factor greater than one, I see one thing, less than one, I see a different thing. Um, Faith, are you going to sh share with us at all in a moment or, or now or whenever? Um, like what, what, how did you make this? I'm sure people are wondering like how, like how did this come about? Is this easy? Is this hard? What's the play? Yeah, for sure. Um, let me kind of go under the hood of this a little bit and I can kind of give you a sense of how this graph was created. So if I go to this screen, you could see that I've got three components on this screen. First, a note where I just tell students uh, the task. I have a math input right underneath of that that allows students to enter in uh, the number for the scale factor and then a graph. And so in this graph, I need to create a few things here. So I used a table to create the original polygon. And then I created three other polygons from there. So I needed a target, which was the green. Well, first of all, I'll show you right here. This is my original polygon, which I used the table headings X1 and then Y1 and then just brought it down here. And is, is this a level of detail that you want, uh, Dan? Am I too, getting too feels into this? I don't know. I don't know. This is a good, I'm, I'm interested here. This is a, <laughs> how does this all work? Well, I think, so when I was creating this, this was definitely an exercise in scale factor for myself, for sure. Because I can take one polygon and I can scale it pretty easily using sliders in Desmos. So you'll notice that in my target right here, there's this little A in front of the X1 and the Y1. And that A is the slider here. And that's how I knew into trouble. Well, I got into trouble before. I was like, what is going on with my scale factor? Because I know I didn't make that scale factor to be, you know, um, to have uh, non-integers in, in, the, in the long side of the original polygon. But anyway, here with this slider, I can control what I want the target to, to, uh, to change to be. So here, particularly, we started with uh, point four, but we can we can make that a little bit easier for students. Maybe this is like the first lesson with scale factor, and we want, you know, we we want to stick with integers. So you you have a lot of uh, freedom and flexibility here. Let me bring that back to point four, and then uh, we wanted the feedback. So the feedback was going to be a separate a third polygon that pops up onto the screen. And so I created that using the same model that we started with the original and then added a second slider. Now this second slider is that scale factor for the feedback. So this is where we get our components in Desmos to start to talk to one another. This B is gonna represent what students enter. So I need, I need to dig into computation layer a little bit. So I wanna take whatever students enter in in this math box and match it up with my graph. So B is a number in the graph. So I 
tell the computation layer that I want B to represent the scale and whatever that n numeric value is. And scale, what that means is just this, the name of this uh, input layer. So scale might be a little confusing for this uh, um, name, so I'm gonna change it real quick. Let's call this um, S input, right? That's what the student inputs. And I can change that right there, student input to give you an idea of like how they talk to one another. All right. Now I do want to show the next screen. Is it? Can I go to the next screen, Dan? Is that we're, all right? We're, we're down to four minutes, and so we're gonna we're gonna load this screen up into um, the show notes in a second. Show notes cool. are, again are uh, right. Let's see, right here. Um, we'll load the second up so you can see that. And we'll also the the first two screens in this uh, activity are um, called robots, which is the the you know it's the Desmos's entire team focuses the Desmos Ion Cannon on this mathematical topic. We'll show that one as well so you can see how that would work. Um, Faith, can you show just that first screen, the one with the, I just love how the sketch, like the sketch screen you had, it has no computation layer, um, has none of that kind of fanciness. It's just, it creates an open space for students to offer uh, scale copy, uh, uh, scale factor two in even different locations on that canvas there. There's other options. Can you just like briefly, real briefly just share uh, for folks who were overwhelmed by computation layer perhaps, like what, what went into that right there? Yeah, sure. Um, so in this screen, again, I'll, I'll just dump right, jump right in real quick. Um, this screen, again, had three components, or just two components. First, just a note where I wanted students, I just wanted to give students directions there, and then a, a sketch screen. So if we go over to the left side, you can select a sketch. And um, when you select the sketch component, you have three options. It can just be a blank, background, an editable graph, or an image. I chose a graph because I wanted to throw a polygon for students to use, and I also wanted the grid there for them to have a tool as well. So similar to the, the screen after this, I used a table to make a polygon and then created my polygon that way. That's awesome. Yeah, whether whether it's a simple non-computation layer connected version or the, that, the scripted version, both of them seem to me like you're trying to access the different ways students think about scale and provide them like a very inviting uh, place for their brilliance to be, which I, I just dig so much about uh, your work and the team's work here at Desmos. Uh, a few comments before we close this out here. Um, again, uh, Alicia Wiley asks, um, is it possible to share this activity with us? I would love to use this for my next Geo chapter. So um, this is happening right now, Faith. Um, and if you folks go to the show notes, um, uh, the show notes, which Autumn, under uh, Faith Moynihan's activity building pro tips, there is that activity. Um, other folks uh, talking about interpretive feedback, which is a lot of language around uh, immediate feedback, uh, but this is what we call it interpretive. It interprets your idea and gives you more than what evaluative feedback, saying you're right or wrong, would offer. Um, so yeah, I love this idea of, of getting, getting better and faster at making those, keeping some cool templates uh, on deck. And Kent here calls out that you could do a negative scale factor on this particular activity, which is a nice way to just help, like a student's gonna wonder. Um, that's slick as well. So yeah, and, and similar to that, Jennifer Loomis here calls out that um, students can solve problems the teacher is not even asking as well as the problem that was asked. Super fun. Folks, there's our show notes. If you are interested in activities of this sort, highly recommend uh, you get on um, our curriculum that we're going to be releasing soon, um, coming up in um, in the winter. We're going to make a lot of this available for folks who are interested in, in doing this year round with students. If that sounds fun to you, hop on that. If you want to have your activity uh, in, tuned up or uh, just looked at by the Desmos team, Use that improve my AB hashtag um, on something on Twitter and let us know when Twitter's back up, when we can finally uh, get back to sharing our, our uh, random thoughts and canceling one another for them. But uh, West Wing has always been trash and do not cancel me. Can't do it. It's been great hanging out with you folks. Uh, just me from, from me, Faith, all of us, like just take care of yourself. Weekend's coming up. Try to put all this aside. Just like, you know, you lost the you lost the papers, can't grade them, whatever. Um, just set them down and go watch some uh, some. Some good TV, some good TV, okay?
All right, uh, best to all you folks. Thanks so much, Faith, for being here. Say, say so long to Faith for us as well, would you? Uh, all you folks in the chat, uh, say thanks to Faith for being here. It's been a blast having you, Faith. So long, folks. Thanks, everybody. Take care.